Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, January 10th, 2019 meeting of the Northampton School Committee. I'm Mayor David Narkowitz, Chair of the Committee, and we'll begin by asking the Clerk to call the roll of the School Committee. Mayor David Narkowitz? Present. Present. Rebecca Here. Ms. Laura Fallon. Present. Ms. Jan Genesee. Present. Ms. Ronnie Hoffman. Present. Mr. Downey Meyer. Mr. Howard Moore. Here. Ms. Susan Bach. Present. Mr. Ezra Howard. Present. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, the first item on our agenda is a public comment period. Um, we have no one signed up officially for public comment. Is there anyone who does wish to speak in public comment? Okay. Certainly. That's, okay. That's all I want. Okay. Certainly. Thank you. Um, great. Uh, so um, no public comments. So I'll move on to announcements. Are there any announcements from members of the school committee? Okay. Hearing none. Um, we next have our recommended actions, and we have a consent agenda, uh, which includes. Um, uh, combination of, of, uh, of items. We have the approval of the minutes of the October 11th, 2018 school committee meeting. We have field trip approvals for the JFK 8th grade chorus going to the Broadhurst Theater in New York, New York on April 24th, 2019. And we have the JFK 8th grade going to the New England Air Museum at Bradley International Airport in Connecticut on March 1st, 2019. We also have two budget transfers, uh, JFK grade 6 teachers to insurance deductibles, $10,632. And then we have a security contract for $6,924. I would entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Discussion. Question. I'd like to ask if we could pull the budget transfers off just because I have a couple questions. Okay. So um, uh, there's been a request to remove the two budget transfers, so we will remove those. Um, so then the, um, the motion in second would be on the remaining items, uh, the um, minutes and the two field trip approvals. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda as amended, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. We'll now move uh, directly to the budget transfers. Um, and uh, we have, again, the first is a JFK grade six uh, uh, teachers to insurance deductibles transfer. <coughs> um, could I get a motion to put that on the table so that we can then have the discussion on it? Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. And you had a question, Ms. Voss? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to understand it better. Um, one question is, what, when grade six teachers, this is quite a bit of money together. It's close to $17,500. And so I'm wondering what we're not doing in the grade te six teachers that was supposed to cost that and just where that money came from. And I also, we got an email, but I didn't fully understand what the insurance deductible, why there was such an increase in that. So that's my question. Those are my questions. So uh, I will uh, I will start that answer, but I would just ask Cammy to jump in if you think I have anything wrong. So the uh, reason that the money is being transferred from grade six teachers is because we have overage due to turnover. Um, and so we're using, that's money we have available for this unexpected expense. The expense related to the um, deductibles is related to two cases um, that were discussed in executive session prior with the school committee. Um, so if I can't really go into, uh, into more detail because it's a matter for executive session. But it's an insurance deductible from our liability insurance. Okay. So the sixth grade teacher piece is sort of not, it's sort of, it's not related to directly to the claims. It's, it's that there is an overage in that account because of turnover, um, which I assume means that a, a more experienced teacher left and a less experienced teacher was hired. That's and so correct. We had a higher salary teacher previously and hired a teacher with lower on the salary scale, which left salary money left in that budget account line. And that's actually the account that we were going to be using for the math study that we did not use. So that money was available for that purpose instead for the insurance deductibles. Okay. So this entire 17500 came from a less expensive teacher salary? Correct. Okay. Thanks. 
So um, there's been a motion made and seconded on that. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, next, there is a request uh, for a transfer uh, for security contract of $6,924. I would accept a motion on that just to put it on the floor. So, is there a second? second. Okay. Uh, Ms. Voss, you had a question on this one? Um, I guess I just wanted to know what it was for. Okay. Um, this was a matter that was shared with the school committee in an email um, that I had previously sent. Uh, I would be happy to refresh you about that afterwards. I think that um, because the nature of this is security, it's very difficult to talk about this publicly without putting an employee at risk. That's fine. I didn't, I didn't connect the two, so okay. that's fine. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So um, any other discussion on this one? All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that uh, transfer is affected. Um, next, we move into reports and recommendations. And first off, we have a report from our student representative, Michael Diaz. Good evening, everyone. It's good to be back. Um, first off, my report is a check-in with our high school girls basketball team who are defending their Western Mass title. They are currently 7-1 and one and look to continue their win streak. Um, the Young Democrats Club, along with other clubs such as Feminist Collective, Environmental Club, will be hosting, announced that they will be hosting a town hall event with uh, Joe Comerford and Lindsay Sabadosa on February 15th at 6 p.m. at the high school and are actively looking for more sponsors to get in on the event. Um, the Key Club announced that they will be having their annual food packaging event on February 4th also at the high school. Um, in other academic news, um, finals for the end of the first semester and a week and a half. Um, and so a lot of students are starting to cram um, late afternoons with some of their teachers reviewing. Um, and last up on my report, would, and um, there was on Tuesday, a large portion of the student body on Tuesday uh, wore red clothing in solidarity with a student who was suspended for three days on Monday. Um, there were rumors that this particular student in question was suspended solely due to wearing the color red, as that student was a student of color. Um, so the administration held an assembly um, to open up a dialogue about these kind of situations um, and to connect to concerned students um, who were at the school. Um, the student um, returns from suspension tomorrow. Um, and that is all I have for you guys tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. Appreciate that. Um, the next item on the agenda is a concerns the approval of our 2019 school committee regular meeting calendar. Um, and I, by way of introduction, I will say that um, this calendar reflects the additional meetings that uh, that um, Superintendent uh, Provost has been working on uh, relative to focusing on student um, achievement and student success um, and to try to take those outside of our normal um, business meetings so we can have a particular focus on them. So I don't know if you want to review those, Superintendent, sure. and go through, and then we can have a conversation about it. So the calendar begins with the usual double sessions for budget for January, February, and March. And then the first opportunity for a success meeting is in April. There's a second meeting proposed in April to discuss mid-year screenings. It will be a little bit far down the road from the actual mid-year screenings at that point, but um, the, this is the window. January is when the mid-year screenings are conducted and the next several months are already filled with budget meetings. Then in May, I would propose a meeting for non-academic indicators. We um, said from the beginning of the discussion that this can't all be about MCAT scores, and so I would propose a meeting specifically devoted to looking at um, things that are not related to standardized testing but are indicators of student success. And then um, a summer without any additional meetings for student success. Then in September, I would propose moving the school improvement plans to their own night. Um, the school improvement plans describe the strategies for improving student success, and it is um, 
been our experience that it's a late night when we're trying to approve six of those as well as doing the regular business of the school committee. And then in October, um, I would propose to have the review of MCAS scores. Um, of course, that's contingent on uh, MCAS scores being available at that time. Typically they are, but you know, that could possibly have to be changed if we're not able to get them in time. The other date that I would put out there that um, is different is July 8th. Um, that's not the second Thursday of the month. That's because the Executive Institute um, is running there. Last year we had moved it to a Tuesday, but this year the Institute is going to be the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, so I would propose meeting on a Monday in July. And then the other date I would throw out as a question mark is the November meeting. Um, that is set for the second Thursday of November, but that may be in a conflict with MASS, MASC. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. To my knowledge, the dates for their 2019 meeting are not out yet. Okay. Um, so, uh, just so that we can discuss the calendar, could, could I get a motion <coughs> just to approve the calendar and then a second and then we can discuss? Motion to approve the 2019 school committee regular meeting schedule as proposed. Second. Okay. Questions? Ms. Fallon. Uh, I was wondering if the committee would like to discuss um, potentially moving our start times for our meetings to a little bit earlier because I know that our meetings have gone late, but I don't know what everyone's schedules are um, or what the interest level is in moving the time, even if it was a half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, to start earlier and hopefully end earlier. Thoughts on that? Okay. Currently, we have the 7:15 start time, um, which I think is was sort of a designed, I think, to allow time for executive sessions that used to happen at the beginning of the meeting. I think um, is my understanding of it. So that's why it's. Just, odd time to start at the 15 minutes after the hour, but I think the thought was that you could start an executive session at 6.30 and, and maybe be done by 7.15. That was prior to my time on the council, on the committee rather. So um, so then the question is, is 7.15, are people amenable to trying to meet a little earlier than 7.15 and what is that number? That's the question. Yes. Sam. Yeah, I think it's a great idea to try and meet earlier. We've discussed before we go so late and now that I hear the explanation of why it's at 7.15, I always did kind of wonder about that. And we're doing executive session afterwards, all the more reason to start earlier so we can maybe try and you know move that to more reasonable hour. It would probably also be easier on school personnel, teachers, administrators, principals to be able to come, you know, and they're all sitting up pretty late with us a lot of nights waiting to speak. So then I guess the question becomes, is it seven, is it seven, is it seven, you know, what is the time right, that people the would like time? to move it to? Um, Ms. Voss. Um, I fully support going earlier. I'd just say the other thing we should discuss is when we meet with the Student Advisory Committee, what that looks like. Do we start at the same time or does that move earlier? That's one thing we just need to address. And then um, I think somewhere in our bylaws it says we can't go later than 11 and I wouldn't mind moving that up by the same amount that we move the start time up. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yes. The Northampton um, Community Television Board meeting ends at 7 on the same Thursdays we have our meetings and mm -hmm. one of us is always going to be a member of that meeting. Oh, okay. Huh. Like me. <laughs> okay. And that's always falls on the. It was, I mean, it was just canceled tonight only because someone was sick. Okay. But yeah. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. So going, so go, so what happens on a night, like if we had a student union meeting? I would to, leave early. You'd leave early. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know what, did, Howard, weren't you on it last year? Um, it seems like we, I didn't have that conflict, so I don't know, maybe the, maybe the day of the week has changed. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, certainly if you were to do this on the nights, if you were to move it to 7 on the nights that you had a student union meeting, then the question becomes, is it at 6.30 or is it then go to 6.15? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I ha um, we haven't had that student union meeting yet, I think, this year, so I don't have a sense of that, um, if a half hour is enough time or not. Um, with the allowance that if it went longer, then, I mean, then the regular meeting would just have to start a little bit later if it went longer. 
I don't I don't know. There are technically two separate meetings, mm -hmm. um, but there's no requirement that a meeting start on time. It just can't start any earlier than the posted time. So you could theoretically have a meeting start at 6:30, and then if it doesn't end at seven, then it doesn't end at seven, and the next meeting starts when the next meeting starts. But. Um, and that's how it's structured now. We have a half an hour for the student advisory council. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if it goes 25 minutes, we, we have to wait till 7 or 7.15 to start. So, um, um, so is, uh, if, if someone would like to make a motion about a time change, we can certainly uh, talk about it more formally to amend the calendar. It's now a motion on the table as proposed, so if someone wants to try to amend it, they require a motion. But, it, but Ms. Hennessy was saying that the meetings end at 7, and you still have to get there, right? generally scheduled till, I mean, they've gone later. And what time did this start? 5.30. 5.30. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Okay, well. Yeah, it, but it also sounds like, Mr. Moore, that maybe the it didn't conflict last year, so the schedule could change again next it's year. Just, they just approved the Thursday meeting. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have where does it happen at the high school? Well, it either happens at the depends <laughs> the yeah. high school or at their new at Holly Street. Yeah. Okay. And would it be disruptive if you had to leave no, 15, no. 15 minutes early no, every I'm meeting? It's their language, so no. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm looking. Would at they still be able to film us. I guess that's the other. But I'm because sure you don't go to those meetings. That's Dave, not right? at the board meeting. He doesn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, are the meetings filmed? Not that I know. Of. Oh, okay, that's that's that'd be <laughs> just kind of curious. Yeah, just curious. You could watch the fifth, last fifteen minutes as a rerun. Um, I mean, I don't mind running over there, and that's not the issue. Okay. I just didn't know if we if that was okay. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's challenging because we, you know, we're trying to schedule. We have to schedule a school committee, and so it just happens that there's one this one board that happens to have that conflict. So. Um, well, Ms. Fallon, you, you made yeah, the... Yeah, uh, I feel like it, it's worth it for 15 minutes to disrupt. I mean, the community expects us to start at 7.15. That's what we've done, and we've got someone who will be running across town okay. to get there. I, I, don't, I don't want you to do it. I don't mind running across the town. It's more, for me, it's just the issue of is that is that a concern that we are, man, you know, we have a board member on that, and then we, if we were to start at 6.30, yeah. it would be not really a participant. You know right. I mean? yeah. Yeah, no, that's all. That, that does sound like a problem for this year. Okay. Can I ask sure. a question? Um, I mean, uh, is there a reason that we couldn't change the, like, if for some reason um, the time changed of the meetings that you go to, you know, for some strange reason halfway through the year, can we change the start time of these? At any time, the school committee can do whatever. Yeah, it wants so we to can agree this. to this calendar now, and then theoretically, maybe. I love the idea of moving it earlier. So, but yeah, yeah. I was just I'm looking through some of my old minutes from the NCTV board meetings, and while I have dates, so I couldn't tell you what day of the week they were, I'm noticing that some of them were scheduled for six o'clock start, some were scheduled for a six thirty start, some for a seven o'clock start. So apparently. There was a fair amount of flexibility. <laughs> so, so I'm saying is, I, I, so I can't. So, so, so I, that's why I didn't have a conflict. Apparently. <laughs> yes. Uh, what if we started at 6:45, and since we've sort of all agreed, you know, we're, we've been in the habit of every other meeting showing up at 6:45. It seems like it's a time that would work, and it's a half an hour earlier. And um, thoughts on that? Well, then, okay, um, Ms. Voss. I like that idea. I'll, I just want to understand um, if we always start at 6:45, what happens with the Hi, this high school student union, what time would they start? 6.15. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I understood that. I can say that that wouldn't be an issue for the students to arrive half an hour earlier. That would be fine with us. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, okay, so I've, I've heard no change. I've heard 6.45. Ms. Burnham? I would go with 6.45. Okay. Just to, and I'm happy to make a... 
Well, it sounds like Ms. Busansky is yeah. going to make. She's making the. Is she making the motion? I'll make a motion to change the start time of the school committee meetings to 6:45 and the student advisory council meetings to 6:15. Moving forward. Second. For 2019, how's that? Okay. So there's been a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Yes. So then the only exception on the calendar would be the joint committee meeting with the city council that's on the 31st? Yeah. And actually, Seven. technically that's a meeting that I'm calling under the charter, so. Okay. You don't get to pick the time of that one. <laughs> okay, but that's going to, I'm just saying if we're looking at the schedule or if other people who are in the audience yeah. are, that's gonna are interested seven. in coming, if yeah. that would stay at seven. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to split the difference too because the council meets at 7, you meet at 7.15, so we were that's why we were doing it at 7. And that meeting's always been the exception, so? That's true. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, okay, so there's been a motion made and seconded to, am, uh, to amend the um, 2019 school committee schedule uh, to amend the start to 6.45 uh, for the regular and for the regular school committee meetings and then 615 for the uh, meetings with the student union. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that's approved. Um, and so now the motion is on the main motion as amended uh, to approve the calendar um, as amended. All those in favor, please I say aye. Ask sure. So, um, Dr. Provost, when you uh, when you looked at these content areas for the uh, additional meetings, mm -hmm. was that something you wanted? Is that something you see set in stone? Did you see opportunities for us to maybe revisit those as we get closer to those dates? You mean change the dates or change the topics? Oh. Um, I think MCAS is set in stone. I think school improvement plans are set in stone. Yeah. The other two could have a little bit more um, flexibility, although I would feel strongly that at least one of the meetings be about non-academic indicators. Yeah, I, I, the reason I bring it up is because I think we're due for an update to the district improvement plan next year, right? Yes. And so that might be something at some point, maybe maybe it would be later on in the winter. I just want to put that on your um, list. And then we are going to get results from the state uh, review. and we have talked about doing that as well. Is that something that you have any idea when we'll get that? And I have no idea when. Um, as as you know, and as I'll just share with the public, one of the, um, I, I don't want to say hiccups, but one of the components of the process is that after the district review team finalizes its findings, it then goes to a professional editor, and that editing process can take some time. So we're not really sure when we'll get the results of our district review. Okay, so um, sounds like if, if we need to change it, there'll be potentially opportunities. I just want to put out those two things on your agenda as possible. Other topics for next year. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? So again, we um, um, we're back to the main motion as amended. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? Okay. So our uh, calendar is now set for 2019. Um, Okay, so the um, next item on the agenda is a vote. This is a gift from the RK Finn Ryan Road PTO, um, and it is a gift of Chromebooks valued at $2,440. I'll turn it over to Cami. Okay, so I believe there is some discussion that we have alternative ways of accepting that gift. We don't need to accept the gift funds available within the IT budget to actually make that purchase. So we're going to ask the committee to not accept the gift and we will speak with the PTO about that. Um, and the purchase will still be made for Orion Road and it will be paid for out of the IT's budget. Okay. So then you don't wish to have a vote on this tonight? Correct. Okay. okay. So we will, uh, we will withdraw that. Yes, Ms. Can we have a short discussion on it or is it just off the agenda? Um, it's off the agenda because it's the the item was the gift. Okay. So, I'll follow up later. Um, so the next item on the agenda is the approval of a Leeds PTO gives gifts uh, totaling five thousand three hundred and thirty-five dollars and twenty cents. Correct. So in your packet was a list of um, PTO gifts. They make a, a listing of the, the gift 
program during the fall, and this is all the um, projects and items that they funded through their PTO. And I just was asking for acceptance of all those gift items. Make a motion to approve the Leeds PTO gives gifts in the amount of five thousand three hundred thirty-five dollars. Second. Okay. Any discussion of those gifts? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So those gifts are uh, gratefully accepted. Um, next, we have our annual required vote. Uh, this is the vote to uh, continue our participation in the school choice uh, program. Um, Dr. Provost, do you have any um, recommendation on this? I think it's very important that we continue to participate in school choice. Our budget is dependent on it. Um, as I mentioned, it's kind of a funny vote. As I recall, districts are automatically enrolled and then asked if they wish to withdraw. And so it would be a motion not to withdraw, which okay. is the equivalent of staying in, according to. Or a motion to withdraw that we all vote against. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to break with precedent because I, I never was shown a desi regulation. Okay, good. That. I just move that we authorize the superintendent to continue our participation in school choice. Is there a second on that? Second. second. Rebellious motion. <laughs> I, I, clarity. clarity. <laughs> just clarity. I think, they, I think Desi could interpret We're saving the five minutes we have about the discussion about the double negative. That's exactly. right. Exactly. That's That's right. right. Yes. Okay. So there's been a motion made and seconded con to continue um, the district's participation in the school choice program. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in oh. I'm sorry. I just have a question because sure. I don't understand it. Um, ha has it. Have the numbers stayed about the same, say, since you arrived, Dr. Provost? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. okay, so all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Any abstentions? Okay, so that uh, that is approved. Um, uh, next, we have, I believe, a report from the Rules and Policy Subcommittee. Um, Ms. Fallon. Um, it'll be brief. Um, we did meet on Monday. We were able to um, work on policies D, N, and D, M. Um, we did um, hope to bring those to the full committee, and you should be hearing back from us um, next month for first reading on both, and then ask me to vote on policy D, N as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for that report. Um, next, we will move to the business manager's report. So, in your packet, I included the um, fiscal 19 appropriation report to date through the end of December um, for all the monthly expenditures. Uh, you notice there's a few areas with deficits as of January 4th. Uh, legal services, which are estimated, no one ever going into negotiations this year. Um, special ed contracted services, long term substitutes. Uh, the security contract service, which you made a transfer for this evening, and the vacation buyback account. Um, instructional software and building maintenance supply accounts are transfers that are in process right now, so we will be bringing those forward during the February meeting. Also, I wanted to let you know that the City Council in December appropriated an additional appropriation to our local budget. Um, so our local budget has increased by $21,429. Um, 14,000 of it was for McKinney Vento, which is um, homeless transportation. So we received additional funds at, in June from the state reimbursement. So the city council appropriated those funds for us. So we put those in the homeless transportation account for fiscal 19. And there was an additional $6,900 for special ed uh, circuit breaker tuition reimbursement that we received. So that's been put into the special ed tuition account in our budget. Um, Upon the recommendation of the mayor, I would just add. Thank you. Um, we appreciate those yes. funds very much. Um, the one. City Council does it. its own. The <laughs> additional item that I have is the um, gifts. Um, there is one gift from the PTO for Jackson Street School for a PTO uh, for a field trip in the amount of $600. That was accepted. And there's one warrant that your representative signed during December. Um, during the holiday season, it's a little bit less of a schedule, so we had one warrant only. 
And for the personnel report, we had one new SP, ESP hired uh, since our last meeting in December. And we had one retirement of a bus driver with 18 years of service since our last meeting. That completes my business report. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions for the business administrator? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Thank you. As I indicated in my recent communications to you all, I had received an inquiry requesting information about the recent superintendent evaluation subcommittee meeting. So in addition to the draft minutes that were included in the packets, I've structured my report around the goal areas that were discussed with the subcommittee, I should say accepted with the school committee. The actual wording of the goals wasn't accepted, but the general areas were. So the first area is student achievement. So in addition to the strategies that we've discussed in previous meetings, I can now update you that we've received a $10,000 DESE grant specifically to help us raise the achievement of English language learners at JFK, which has to be the highest instructional priority at this time based on our MCAS scores. With the $10,000 grant, we've planned the following four activities, some of which have already started. First, the district will facilitate a number of SEI convening days, SEI is Sheltered English Immersion, for middle school teachers. These days will provide content teachers with the opportunity to refresh and share SEI strategies that they've been trained in and apply them in their classes. ESL teachers from JFK and from other schools will contribute to the in-house professional development activity. Um, it's not a matter of having sufficient number of SEI endorsed teachers, it's just that it has been a few years since the SEI training was provided to all and so we felt it would be good to um, refresh that training and also to focus on the strategies that we have found to be most effective with our population instead of the general state mandated training that everybody has. The second strategy is that we will provide focused coaching for teachers of 18 English language learners that we've identified as students who we really want to support. A coach will observe each of the students in various classroom settings and provide teachers with explicit feedback on how to improve their effectiveness with these individual students. Third, we will provide after school tutoring on site and at two um, community based locations where a majority of the English language learners at JFK reside. And fourth, we will purchase the WIDA model online assessment system to supplement language acquisition progress monitoring for the English language learners placed at JFK. So these strategies will supplement those that have already been uh, included and improved in the school and district improvement plans. We've also begun work on the FY20 school budget with a focus on expanding some strategies that have proven to be most effective at increasing student achievement while moving away from some other strategies that have been less effective. The second uh, goal area, so that was all for goal one. Moving on to goal two, second goal area will focus on facilitating a successful district review process. As you know, we've completed the self-assessment and submitted a proposed site visit schedule. We ha have a wonderful review chair who I've been working with for the past several months. Um, she's been out to the district, not to um, actually do any formal work on that, but just to um, work with me around the process. I've also been working with the administrative team and union leadership to make sure that everything is ready for the reviewers when they arrive so that we can obtain the maximum benefit from this opportunity. The third goal focuses on developing the new code of conduct. As you know from reading the insider, we're making steady progress on that with a diverse group of stakeholders. The activity is also a mentoring opportunity for me. You know that Beth Jaquette is in a doctoral program to superintendent licensure and I've asked her to take formal leadership of this process so that I can give her some experience with the type of tasks that superintendents typically do and also provide her with some feedback on change management. So there are several subgroups that are working on different parts of the new handbook at this time. For obvious reasons, Ms. Chiquette has tasked me to lead the policy subgroup, um, which is the longest part. Um, so I'll admit that we've fallen a little bit behind some of our other groups, but we had a day-long session today to get ourselves back on Beth's timeline. The fourth goal focuses on standards-based grading. Since this falls squarely within the realm of curriculum and instruction, Dr. Cheevers has been our guide on this journey 
Um, and as a person who tends toward quantitative analysis, my role in the group really has been to assist when needed, um, when, when sort of quantitative analytical tools are needed to uh, examine some of the questions they've been asking, questions such as, what is the correlation between grades in certain courses and the MCAS scores students obtain in tests that purport to measure the content taught in those courses? Um, fifth goal was chosen to enable me to deepen my own instructional practice and contribute to the professional development of pre-service and early career educators by teaching one educated related <coughs> course, um, education related course rather, at a college or university level. So this fall I taught a combined undergraduate and graduate course at Smith College in learning differences. The course was intended to give students experiences that will build their skills to deliver effective instruction for students with disabilities, English language learners, or students who struggle to learn for whatever reason. Um, I've been giving presentations, talks, and other kinds of one-off learning experiences since I've stepped into district administration. Um, but it's been a long time since I've experienced the joys and challenges of building a learning community and following the arc of a course of instruction all the way from introduction to the demonstration of student learning. So it was a really good and refreshing experience for me to get my instructional sea legs back under me. So I'm grateful that I've had that experience. And the final goal came from feedback I received in prior evaluations about the importance of taking sufficient vacation to be able to make optimal use of my physical and psychological resources and also to periodically reorient my perspective. Um, and we discussed the importance of actually sticking to scheduled vacation days no matter what happens in the district. And I'm just going to say this is going to be one of my growing edges. Um, it, that is one thing I struggle with. Um, for example, last Friday I was scheduled to be out of the district. But I really wanted to be at Bridge Street School to support them through some difficult news. Um, so I cheated on a visit that turned into an all-day session that lasted into the night. Um, so hopefully you'll find me doing better at sticking to the scheduled time off by the end of the evaluation. That's my report. Thank you, Dr. Provost. Um, we have, uh, in terms of scheduled meetings, we have obviously the, the aforementioned joint School Committee and City Council on January 31st, 2019 at 7 p.m. We have a negotiating subcommittee scheduled for Wednesday. Well, I guess that was yesterday. <laughs> um, we have a school committee meeting with the Student Advisory Committee for Thursday, February 14th, 2019 at 6.15 p.m. Um, and then we have the school committee budget meeting on Thursday, February 28th at 6.45 p.m. I'm editing on the fly here. Um, I would now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Meeting of the Northampton School Committee is adjourned.